Hi there. Welcome to our fourth lesson in this series on magnetism. In this lesson, we will find out why free moving magnets always point in the same direction. Although the Greeks had discovered lodestone and later the Chinese had invented a simple compass, no one really understood why a compass always points in a north south direction. Isn't it strange to think that people had been using compasses for more than a thousand years without really understanding why or how they work? It was only in 1600 after William Gilbert published his research into the properties and behavior of lodestone that people began to understand why a compass really works. William Gilbert was the first person to compare the earth to a bar magnet. He showed that there is a magnetic force field around a magnet and suggested that there must be a similar magnetic force field around the earth. In this lesson, we will focus on the Earth's magnetic field and show how it supports life on Earth. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the Earth's magnetic field and evaluate its impact on life on Earth. To start with, let's recap what we know about the magnetic force field around a bar magnet. Firstly, this force field occupies a region in space all around the magnet. The magnetic force field is a three-dimensional force field. Secondly, we know that the magnetic force field is strongest at the ends of the magnet. We call these the poles of a magnet. Remember, when we attached paperclip chains to a magnet, we found the longest chains formed at the poles of the magnet. The chains in the middle of the magnet were shorter. This shows us that the magnetic force field is much weaker away from the poles. To get a more detailed picture of the magnetic field, we used compasses to show us the shape and direction of the field. Remember that a compass is made from a free-moving magnet. The needle of the compass will usually point in the north-south direction. But when a compass is brought close to a permanent magnet, the needle no longer points in the usual direction, but points in the direction of the magnetic field. Notice that a compass needle is repelled by the north pole of the magnet and points away from it. As the compass is moved away from the magnet, the needle is deflected and starts to point towards the south pole of the magnet. We say that the magnetic field direction is from north to south outside the magnet. But when a compass is placed on top of the magnet, it shows us the direction of the field here is from south to north. Armed with this information, you should now be able to draw a diagram to represent the shape and direction of the magnetic field around a bar magnet. Why don't you try it? Remember, we call the lines showing the field, field lines. These lines never touch each other or cross over. We also always show the direction of the field on the field lines by drawing in an arrow. Have a look at my diagram and compare to yours. At the North Pole, the field lines are close together and point away from the North Pole. Here, the field is strongest. As we move away from the pole, the strength of the field decreases and the field lines are deflected towards the south pole. Notice in the middle of the bar magnet, the field lines run parallel to the bar magnet. Here, the lines are drawn further away from each other. This indicates that the magnetic field is weaker here. Closer to the south pole, the field lines curve towards the south pole. Here, the field is stronger. This is represented by the field lines being close together. On the inside of the magnet, we draw the field lines from south to north. It was this magnetic field around a magnet that made William Gilbert think that there must be some similarities between a bar magnet and the Earth. He suggested that the Earth could be compared to a giant bar magnet. He argued that there must be a strong magnetic field surrounding the Earth. 
when a free-moving magnet is placed inside the Earth's magnetic field, this magnet will experience a force and align itself with the Earth's magnetic field. Before we examine the Earth's magnetic field in more detail, we need to clarify some confusing terminology. The words North and South are used to describe two things. Firstly, these are names given to direction. Geographically, the Earth is divided into two hemispheres by the equator. The Northern Hemisphere contains all the lines of latitude between the equator and 90 degrees north and the southern hemisphere contains all the lines of latitude from the equator to 90 degrees south. But the words north and south are also used to describe the nature of a magnetic pole. The one end of a magnet is called the north pole and the other the south pole. The reason the opposite ends of magnets were named like this is because the north pole of a free-moving magnet always points to geographic north. The second word that can also be confusing is the word pole. We have called the region where the magnetic field is the strongest a pole. But the Earth also has two geographic poles. These are points at the extreme north and south ends of the Earth. The imaginary line that joins these two points is called the Earth's axis. The Earth rotates around this axis once every 24 hours. The geographical point found at latitude 90 degrees north is called the North Pole and the point at 90 degrees south is called the South Pole. Now, let's take a closer look at the Earth's magnetic field. We are going to examine three things about this magnetic field. Firstly, the direction of the field. Secondly, we will establish the position of the magnetic poles and then we will take a look at the shape of the field. Let's start with the direction of the field. We can use a compass at any point on the Earth's surface to find the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. The direction is clearly from the geographic south towards the geographic north. Does this mean that the Earth's magnetic field is different from a bar magnet's? Hmm, this is tricky. Remember, a compass needle gives the direction of the magnetic field around the bar magnet and it also gives the field direction for the Earth's magnetic field. So, the magnetic field of both the bar magnet and the Earth must have a direction from a magnetic north pole to a magnetic south pole. What this means is that there is a difference in geographic and magnetic north and south. The type of magnetic pole at the geographic north of the Earth is actually a magnetic south. And at the geographic south down here, we have a magnetic north. Now that we recognize that there is a difference in geographic north and magnetic north, let's see if there's a difference in the position of the geographic and magnetic poles. Can you think of a way to find one of the magnetic poles using a free-moving bar magnet? Let me give you a hint. Have a look at the field lines around a bar magnet again. Do you see that the field lines at this magnetic south are pointing straight down into the Earth? If you were to stand at the magnetic south or north pole, your bar magnet would dip vertically downwards. Scientists can take measurements of this magnetic dip at different positions on the Earth's surface and use these measurements to accurately calculate the exact position of the magnetic poles. These poles are not the same as the geographic poles. In fact, the magnetic poles do not remain in a fixed position, but change continually. In 2004, the magnetic pole in the Northern Hemisphere was estimated to be at 82,3 degrees north, 113,4 degrees west. And the magnetic pole at the Southern Hemisphere was estimated to be at 63,5 degrees south, and 138 degrees east. 
these magnetic poles experience both gradual and dramatic changes. Geologists have found rock samples that show pieces of magnetite pointing in different alignments. This is evidence that the magnetic field of the Earth has been reversed many times in the past. Some are even predicting that another reversal is in fact overdue. So far, we have established the direction of the Earth's magnetic field and the position of the poles. But what about the shape of the Earth's magnetic field? Have a closer look at this. When the idea of comparing the Earth to a bar magnet was first published, people thought that the Earth's magnetic field was very similar to a bar magnet. But today we recognize that this magnetic field is not symmetrical like an ordinary bar magnet. Our journey into space has helped us understand more about the complex nature of the systems that sustain life on Earth. One of these systems is the Earth's magnetic field. Although the Sun provides us with energy to support life, many high-energy charged particles stream towards Earth every second. This stream of particles is called the solar wind. The solar wind would harm all life forms if it were to strike Earth. Fortunately, we have a special shield to protect us, our magnetic field. Magnetic fields have effects on magnetic materials, but they can also deflect the direction of moving charged particles. When the solar wind hits Earth's magnetic field, all the charged particles are deflected away from the Earth. However, the magnetic field on the side of the Earth facing the Sun is squashed, while the other side is drawn out into a long tail reaching more than 3 100,000 kilometers into space. Some charged particles do penetrate the outer field, but are trapped in a region of the magnetic field closer to the Earth. These particles are deflected towards the poles where they excite the gases of the atmosphere. The gases absorb energy from these particles, but then release the energy in the form of light. This spectacular display of strange light found in both the Arctic and Antarctic regions is called aurora. I hope you can see that the Earth's magnetic field is not simply an interesting phenomena, but it is in fact essential for life on Earth. On that note, here's your task for today. Write a report to show how magnetism has impacted life on Earth. You may want to examine the role of magnetism in technology or in the environment. As we come to the end of the series on magnetism, it feels like we are just like those early pioneers who used a compass but never understood why or how it works. Today, we can explain that a compass points north because of the Earth's magnetic field. We can look at photos of the aurora and be thankful that the magnetic field is protecting us from the solar wind. But we do not really know fully why the Earth's magnetic field exists. Scientists have suggested many theories and constructed different models, but there is no way for us to tell for sure how the Earth's magnetic field is generated inside the Earth's core. So, it seems that this amazing phenomenon of magnetism still remains mysterious. Yeah.